Hi, I'm your host, Daniel Riley, and you're watching Palestine Studies TV. Today I'm speaking with Dan Walsh, curator of the Palestine Poster Project Archives. The Archives Liberation Graphics Collection, which has more than 1,700 posters included, has recently been nominated to UNESCO's Memory of the World program. Dan, thank you for being with us today. I'd like to begin by thanking um, Kathy Baker and uh, Dr. Rochelle Davis from Georgetown University, um, who both of whom have been uh, indispensable in the uh, development of the Palestine Postal Project Archives, and probably wouldn't be a Palestine Postal Project Archives without the committed uh, dedication and help of, uh, of Kathy and Rochelle. So Dan, can you please tell me a little bit about the, the archives and I, I guess like the size of the archives and how long you've been running the archive for? Well, the Palestine Postal Project Archives has almost 10,000 Palestine-related posters online, uh, uh, translated for the most part, uh, freely available, there's no login, there's no cost, and uh, it's fully searchable. Um, it's uh, searchable by artist name, by title, by theme, uh, year of production, country of production. It's, a, it's meant to be, it's designed to be an educational resource of value to teachers, students, journalists, uh, academics, uh, anybody really who wants to understand the history of Palestine as told. So could you give me a description of exactly what a Palestine poster is or what comprises a Palestine poster? Basically it's any poster with the word Palestine on it. Mm -hmm. In any language, from any source, in any time period. Uh, for example, the oldest Palestine poster at the uh, Archives website is from 1898. It's a French tourism poster saying uh, Palestine, just uh, Palestine with a picture of Bethlehem. And, and uh, it was um, meant to promote tourism. Uh, to Palestine back in the late 1800s, on up to on up to uh, posters that were done yesterday in Photoshop by mm -hmm. artists, say uh, um, uh, Hafez Omar, uh, an artist who lives in the West Bank and who is prolific and who publishes posters on a regular basis um, on all kinds of elements, on all, all aspects of Palestinian life. So there are very old posters and there are very new posters on Palestine. By looking through the collection myself, I've seen that some of the posters go back to some of the early Zionist immigration to Palestine, and those are also included in this heritage, it seems, of, their, of this Palestine, uh, Palestine poster archive. So could you explain to me how that is part of also the cultural heritage of, Palestinian, of the Palestinian people and of Palestine as a nation? Sure, that's an excellent question. Um, there are four wellsprings featured at the, uh, at the website. Um, and all 10,000 posters fall under one of these sources, uh, Palestinian nationalist artists mm -hmm. and publishers, uh, Zionist or Israeli artists and publishers, uh, Muslim Arab artist, uh, artists and publishers, and international artists and publishers. And the reason why Zionist posters are included, there are over 3,000 Zionist posters, is that many Zionist posters feature the word Palestine on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they qualify on a number of different levels. Some of the some of the earliest Zionist posters coming from the 20s and 30s all talk about visiting Palestine or emigrate to Palestine or rebuild Palestine because during that period, uh, basically from the Basel Conference in 1898 up until 1948, Zionists referred to Palestine as Palestine and to mm -hmm. themselves as Palestinians. So there are a great many Zionist published posters featuring the word Palestine now, the archives in most of these posters, were many of them produced within Palestine or were they produced outside of Palestine in either the refugee communities or by individuals who were associated with the Palestinian diaspora? I would say that, I would say that the vast majority of the Palestine posters featured at the site were uh, designed, printed, published, and distributed outside of historic Palestine. And part of the reason for that is that uh, poster production in the occupied territories in Palestine proper, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, had been outlawed by the Israelis. Uh, in fact, it was, in, it was uh, against the law, against military law 101, mm -hmm. for Palestinians to publish posters or show the Palestinian flag until the Oslo Accords of 1993. So the production of posters that took place within the occupied territories, um, you know, you could look at some of the posters by Fatahi Rabin, uh, some of the posters of uh, Sliman Mansour and several other artists who mm -hmm. did publish 
within the occupied territories. The symbolism is very muted. There's a, a it's it's not it's not overtly mm -hmm. uh, committed to armed struggle. There are very few weapons, um, and they're they're much more complex and subdued. The post is done outside the occupied territories, outside historic Palestine, by the PLO, by Fatah, by the PFLP, and others. Much more uh, militant, much mm -hmm. more unrestrained, um, and much more widely produced. So what is the significance of this UNESCO Memory of the World um, nomination to the archives now for not only Palestinians, but also for the international community, as well as the future of the archive itself? Well, the, um, and we, we, we should be, make clear that the, um, that the archives, the Palestine Poster Project archives has not been nominated. Mm, yes. Just a specific collection of 1,700 posters mm -hmm. within the larger archives has been nominated. And... Um, to answer your, your question, I would say that the significance is that uh, for the for the genre is, yeah. the, is that is that it's been recognized by an international body. Up until now, the Palestine poster has sort of existed in the shadows. It hasn't really been legitimated. It hasn't really been the artwork. You could say that the artwork, the the art of the the Palestinian revolution or the Palestinian uh, liberation struggle has not been legitimated uh, in the West. It's been considered um, uh, anti-Semitic or anti-Israeli or um, patently unacceptable for mainstream consumption. I think this um, nomination uh, has the potential to change that. And the significance for the archives, to answer your question, you asked three questions, what's the significance for the archives, what's the significance for Palestine, what's the significance for the discourse. Yep. For the archives, I would like to think that by having much more attention drawn to the, to the website and the, and the genre, that more people who have private collections, who saved posters when they were, say, living in Brazil in the 50s and uh, have a collection of Palestine posters from, from that period, that are not currently part of the archives, they might consider submitting those, taking pictures of them and submitting them, so we can get a fuller picture. One of the interesting things about how the internet has, has played a role here mm -hmm. is, even though some of these posters have been in, uh, I've been collecting since the 70s, and other people have been collecting before then and now, is that there was really nothing to do with them. There was really no place to put them where they could be shared. You kind of just store them aside. Yeah, just store yeah. them aside, roll them up, put them under your bed or in a closet mm -hmm. or whatever. Now, the owing to uh, digital cameras and digital telephones and Photoshop and the ubiquitous nature of the internet plus this website, there's actually something you can do. People can actually be para-anthropologists, mm -hmm. take pictures of their Palestine posters, send them in and let them become part of those images which document some element of Palestinian culture, maybe in Palestine, maybe in France, maybe in Angola, wherever, mm -hmm. that can be, now that can become part of the larger story. The, the, the impact for um, the discourse is that by having the posters available at the website and having the and having UNESCO recognize them uh, as they you know, I mean and, and we should we should add that the posters have been nominated for inscription mm -hmm. they haven't been inscribed in the memory of the world uh, program yet that will come in 10 to 12 months if it comes yeah. if they do approve it um, but the point is that a major UN body has recognized the possibility that this is a unique art form and worth, worth saving. Right. Dan, can you uh, help us analyze uh, some of the iconography and the content of these posters? Sure. Here's one from uh, about 1972 published by Fatah. Um, the title of it is uh, Unitary Democratic. And if you look at it, you'll see that the top caption says Uni Unitary Democratic Non-Sectarian Palestine. And underneath it is a Muslim crescent, a Christian cross, and a Jewish menorah. And it has the uh, name of the publisher, Fatah, uh, printed uh, uh, prominently in the lower right-hand corner. And what this demonstrates is that from the beginning, and if you speak to Fatah people today, they've always said that the struggle of the Palestinians and the struggle of Fatah had nothing to do with religion, that it was not a religious war, a religious struggle. And it's a it's a nationalist struggle, it's a struggle for land, it's a struggle for identity. But this shows that early on, 
Palestinian political leadership was willing to publicly state in their posters that they were not a religiously motivated uh, revolution or liberation movement, and that they were willing to work with all religions and they were willing to have members of all three religions, both as their members and as their allies, and that they were speaking through this poster um, to those publics to say, we're not religiously driven, we're not religiously motivated. And so I think this is an important poster because it puts, puts the Palestinian political leadership on the record for having a non-sectarian agenda. Here's a poster by the American um, artist Doug Minkler who lives in Oakland. And um, Doug has been doing posters in solidarity with Palestine from the, uh, about the mid-1980s. And I think this is the first ever American published poster um, challenging, uh, criticizing U.S. military aid to Israel. And what it demonstrates is that um, even though the Congress and the media and many uh, political leaders say that the United States supports Israel and, uh, and will continue, there's no daylight between the two and they'll continue to support, that in popular sense, which is what a poster is really good at registering, how people on the street feel about political issues, that Doug's voice is a voice in opposition to that. And he's suffered quite a bit for this poster and uh, several of his other Palestine uh, solidarity posters in the sense that as a professional artist, uh, he's had uh, exhibits closed down or invitations canceled because he's refused to take his Palestine posters out of his exhibits, mm -hmm. something that uh, domestic Zionist groups have demanded of the different venues where he was uh, invited to show. This is by Raili Liejo, who is a French artist. And I included it here because it includes a couple of um, uh, symbols from Palestinian iconography. Olive trees in the shape of the name Palestine, the orange growing from the end of the branch, the dove, and the fact that the caption of that exhibit was Palestine, a homeland denied. And so the, the, the makeup of the roughly 45 or 50 artists who participated uh, is international. I mean, it comes from so many different countries. And to me, that speaks to the resonance that the issue of Palestinian liberation has around the world, that it's not simply Palestinians mm -hmm. or even Arabs or Muslims who are uh, dedicated to the liberation of Palestine, but that people around the, the, the issue resonates with people around the world because, according to the artists, the basic issue is about justice. And since that resonates since that resonates everywhere, we have artists from everywhere participating in creating today's Palestine posters. To learn more about the archive, as well as view the more than 10,000 plus posters in its collection, you can visit the website palestineposterproject.org. And to learn more about the Institute and watch more episodes of Palestine Studies TV, you can visit our website at www.palestine-studies.org. Thank you for watching.